now masonry as infill walls we oftenly see in the frame structures masonry uh, is used as a infill walls so infill walls are the walls which are confined on all four sides like beam column and uh, either slab or uh, bottom column uh, bottom beam on all four sides with reinforced concrete or reinforced uh, masonry as vertical and horizontal confining element vertical and horizontal confining element which are not intended to carry either vertical or horizontal load this brick masonry is do not intended to take the load okay these are used as a infill and are sub, uh, consequently not designed to perform as moment resisting frame these will not take any moment masonry is usually used as infill wall and is also known as confined masonry in case of masonry infill frames the rc frame structure which is designed to resist vertical and seismic loading without infill is constructed first means these beams columns is constructed first then masonry uh, is uh, infill is constructed later masonry filler walls are very often constructed as non structural elements after the completion of main rc structure I mean after the completion of frame structure beams columns then after that infill walls are constructed as the experimental investigation and experience research experience obtained after earthquake have shown confining the masonry walls with bond beam and tied tied and tie column results in in improvement in connection between structure walls what is bond beam here between the uh, brick masonry or masonry work there is a horizontal uh, beam is provided Uh, with some steel reinforcement minor reinforcement uh, that uh, act as a joining element with the vertical elements here uh, the column tie column here the bricks are uh, are joined with the uh, end element with that uh, uh, with the interlock interlocking phenomena okay this will result in the following phenomena improvement in connection between structural walls okay now there masonry with the structural element very good connection improvement in the stability of slender structural walls if the structural walls mean if the wall height is large then still this connection will help us in resisting the moments in resisting the applied loading improvement in strength and ductility of masonry panels and during the earthquake this has been seen that there is uh, much strength and ductility of masonry walls reduction in the resist risk of disintegration of masonry panels damaged by the earthquake so there is a reduction in the risk uh, when we uh, construct our elements like this in order to ensure structural integrity vertical confining element should be located located at all corners and recess of the building and uh, at all joints and all intersections here there is opening you have provide uh, uh, oftenly provide the lintels but you should also provide the vertical elements on the outsides it will resist the uh, earthquake uh, and the lateral forces vertical confining elements uh, in addition they should be placed at both sides of any wall opening just like this one and your brick masonry should be joined uh, with a column okay for the interlocking good interlocking phenomena vertical confining element should also be placed at all free ends of structural walls if there is a uh, wall is ending at any point there should be a, some uh, vertical element uh, uh, which have a interlocking phenomena with the uh, behind wall so vertical confining element should also be placed at all free ends of structural walls